But uh, yeah, I, I'd always wanted to. Not always. That's a bold faced lie. I never <laughs> wanted to watch these movies ever until I, I got lied. older. <laughs> <And> <laughs> I am lying. I'm Blake. And I'm Dave. And this is the Alien Movie episode of First Prize Films, mm -hmm. a podcast born from an egg where we each select a genre-specific movie and pit them against each other to find out which film was the coveted title of First Prize. Dave, what does that mean for us? Yeah, so it's like washing your car in the rain. It's pointless. Today we are hurtling through space while fighting aliens who lay eggs in our stomachs with these alien movies. Ooh, I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> this week I made Dave watch 1979's Alien, a film that made me realize that my Christian sex ed class was right. You can get pregnant from a hug. <laughs> And I made Blake watch Aliens, a movie about killer extraterrestrials. Again. <laughs> <laughs> Multiples of them. <laughs> yeah. So I know we picked these two movies, this movie and its sequel, because, yes. you know, I guess you're just tired of me having never seen, uh, you know, classic movies. It's true. And uh, I needed to watch both. But you picked Alien and left me with Aliens. So mm -hmm. talk about why you like Alien so much, if you even do. This is often a matchup people do talk about, and mm -hmm. I, I wanted to explore what's all the fuss about. So mm -hmm. uh, I'm very excited for the original Alien film, directed by Ridley Scott, yeah. and um, the sequel, of course, Aliens, directed by James Cameron. James so, Cameron, yeah. James Cameron, two big directors helming the start of this franchise, and I think they're two great films, uh, honestly, yeah. from my experience and from my memory, so I really wanted to give them an extra little look and see what's uh, going on under the hood. Uh, it's a metaphor I never thought you'd use, but sure. I know what cars are. <laughs> <laughs> I had always heard, you know, Alien this, Alien that, and I'd never seen it because I'd never seen anything, especially even remotely horror related. Yeah. And uh, I always, like, I knew what they looked like, and I always just kind of thought Alien versus Predator. Who didn't see Alien versus Predator on TV at some point? Me, I what? didn't. What the fuck, Dave? It's the most accessible <laughs> to our generation, especially. <laughs> he does it every week now. I saw that shit in <laughs> theaters. <laughs> I guess I'm gonna have to watch that now too. Um, <laughs> we'll do a movie night. No, I'd never like. I never had any real urge to watch these movies at all. I was not like a mm -hmm. horror movie fan or like anything that could remotely give me nightmares. I steered clear of as a kid. So, yeah. Obviously, I wanted to watch it later in life because it's. A classic and i sure. wanted to not be so movie illiterate yeah fair enough you know i mean for me i, I was apprehensive too because i think space horror stuff is boring and i don't <laughs> care because we see all the same sets and all the stuff and just feels so like long and drawn out and boring so i never really uh, have attached myself to like space you know ship mm horror stuff it just mm -hmm. i don't know but people still talk about alien so like hey uh, you know don't be a dick blake What's this thing all about? See what people are talking about. What all the kids are jiving about. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know, man. I feel like you might think space horror movies are boring. In general, I still stand by the fact that I think a lot of space horror movies are boring because I feel like the writers have no fucking idea what to do when they get there. You I've know? never been to space. You, so. No, not the, the... You know what I'm saying? When they, they <laughs> set... God damn it, Dave. It feels like, hey, we have a, a an intro, we have a, a first act, and we have a third act, or at least we have a climax. And then we'll just... Mm -hmm. I don't know. People walk around, and there's flashlights and shit in the middle. I don't fucking know. Um, movie. Yep. Boom. But, We're going um, to movie after we movie, and then we'll movie. Oh, let's follow up with the movie. <laughs> <laughs> so since we did a movie in its direct sequel... And we have to do it in chronological order. And you picked yeah. Alien. You get to go first this time. So let's just go ahead and, and have you go first and hop into Alien. And really show me your love for the space horror genre. So I'll try to stay awake. <laughs> <laughs> Movie 1, Alien, 1979. Okay, Blake, here we go. It's time to get into Alien. Give me the synopsis. Traveling back from deep space, the crew aboard a commercial spaceship discover an insidious alien race. Just like my ex-girlfriend, they hug you before ripping your heart out. <laughs> the question is, who will survive, and why will it be Ripley? <laughs> 
We open to a commercial spaceship, Nostromo, in deep space. Dave's mom makes a mean Nostromo herself, I'm sure, but here what? are seven crew members awakened from stasis. Dave is Italian. Fuck you. That seemed racist? I love you, uh, Teresa. <laughs> I hope you're listening. Stasis, by the way, that our crew members are in is the process by which uh, our crew members are basically frozen and their aging process is halted. Yeah, it's a quick nap. It, yeah, exactly. I'm currently in my anti-stasis era where everything's <laughs> breaking and my face looks like lasagna, but please, let's move on. I'm very sad. Crispy lasagna, Blake. Get it right. <laughs> Still with us, Brett. Right. Oh, yes. so dead. Anybody ever tell you you look dead? <laughs> So the ship captain, Dallas, enters the command room, which apparently is decorated with light brights from 1980, and he talks, <laughs> he talks to the ship's computer mother to figure out what's going on. Not at all creepy. Nope. Mother's interrupted the course of our journey. Seems she has intercepted a transmission of unknown origin. She got us up to check it out. A transmission? Out here? Basically, the ship brought everybody out of stasis to check out some transmission coming from a nearby moon instead of taking them like directly back to Earth. So uh, think of it kind of like your, your dad took a seven-hour detour to see the world's <laughs> largest ball of yarn instead of just driving home from the grocery store. It's like, yeah, the gift shop sucks and my milk is chunky. It's... it's <laughs> I, I don't like this. I don't like the detours, and neither does the crew, but they have to go. So our crew heads for the moon. Locked and floating. It drops any time now. We'll catch it. All right, initial damping's going off. Hold on, people. There's going to be a little bump. Now our team essentially crash lands on this moon, and they move to find the source of that transmission. So we have Captain Dallas, Executive Officer Kane, and Navigator Lambert. They head out into the harsh terrain to investigate what's mm -hmm. going on here and this this is what's wild about this film too this terrain is like sparse it's like dark yeah. and windy and essentially minnesota on like any <laughs> winter day it just fucking sucks all around you know what really bothers me though is that they're immediately worried about the nighttime on this yeah. moon yeah. and uh it's like hey why didn't you land on the day side <laughs> You had a choice. <laughs> <laughs> Could have landed on the other side. <laughs> to be fair, the transmission is coming from the dark side of the moon. Cue the Pink Floyd. <laughs> uh. Wait a minute, we're going to get sued. <laughs> yeah, hold on. Okay, okay, okay. Back on track. I can't see a goddamn thing. Quit griping. I like griping. So our ground crew is trudging along, and they actually do end up seeing something in the distance. Ash, can you see this? Yes, I can. I've never seen anything like it. It's an alien ship uh -oh. or something. I don't, I don't know. We see it through their like pixelated little helmet cams and the footage is, yeah, it's spooky. It's, it's really spooky. But okay, my thing is, why are they surprised? Where did they think the transmission was coming from? A rock? Maybe a very beepy rock. <laughs> <laughs> but this does feel like right up there with some of the best found footage horror in terms of like the atmosphere. Uh -huh. I'm also a little bit scared of VHS quality content. <laughs> I don't know, my, th my therapist and I are working through it, Dave. Great, let me know how that goes. Terribly. It's not this far, we must go on. We have to go on. Our intrepid explorers climb onto this ship, and the only way I can describe it is that the interior decorator listened to a lot of Bauhaus and early Cure records because it's dark <laughs> as shit in there. Man, like they got into some real goth feng shui up in this bitch. Sounds like uh, a lot of people on TikTok's wet dream. Mine especially. Oh, boy. <laughs> I'm wet. So it's... Oh. oh! What do you think of, like, the, the inside of the ship? Because the shots are stunning. I don't know. It's, like, it's beautiful in there. I mean, there's two very weird ways to say scary as fuck, but it's <laughs> fine. Uh, <laughs> I think that we see a ship, right. and there's a hole in it. Yeah. If there's a hole in a ship, no. No. I no. think we've learned from all kinds of movies, if there's a hole in a vessel, you don't go into that vessel. Cosmic whales be afoot. <laughs> Anyway, they find an alien. Oh, no. Alien life form. Looks like it's been dead a long time. Fossilized. So whoever these aliens were, they got fucked up by something. Yeah. They look like they, they've like broken bones and alien femurs and stuff. I don't know. But what I do know <laughs> is that these alien bones aren't the only thing our stupid explorers discover. There's eggs, baby. Come again, eggs? Yes. Um, I think it's time to get out. Actually... It's half past time to get out. It is completely enclosed, and it's full of leathery objects like eggs or something. Okay, put yourself in this position, Dave. No. You see alien space eggs. What is your move? Leave. Immediately. Yeah? 
immediately leave, never talk about it, say there's nothing, we're going home, don't question me or I'll kill everybody. I say double up on the cholesterol pills and fry them some bacon, <laughs> bitch. It's Minnesota and I'm hungry. <laughs> Our crew, on the other hand, decides they want to see what these eggs actually are, and it's bad news for anybody with dry underwear. Uh, <laughs> Wait a minute, this movement seems to have life, organic life. Something moves inside the eggs, and the words of the zookeeper guy from Jurassic Park ring very clearly in my mind. Mm. Shoot her! <laughs> Shoot her! My question is, why is it shocking that there's organic life in an egg. Maybe they thought they were like fossilized eggs or so. I don't know. That's a good question. I okay. wouldn't have thought of them. Um, again, I'd just be eating good in the neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> but while this absolute uh, nightmare is progressing, we do have a revelation back on the ship from Warrant Officer Ripley, played by Sigourney Weaver. Ash, that transmission, Mother's deciphered part of it. It doesn't look like an SOS. Well, what is it then? Well, I. It looks like a warning. Of course, the transmission is a warning. There's a little moving demon egg in a spaceship in Minnesota. Get the fuck out of there. I mean, why were you in Minnesota to begin with? Get out of Minnesota. <laughs> but you know what they say, curiosity killed the dumbass Americans. Yes, always. <laughs> If you didn't recognize that sound, Dave, it was the exact frequency of an alien life form springing from an egg and attaching itself to the face of Executive Officer Kane. Yeah, see, I knew that the face sucking was coming and I still jumped. I know. There's a lot of those moments in this movie where I'm like, you know it's coming. And I still was like jolted, still startled because it shot really frighteningly. <laughs> right. Like, like very scarily it's and this whole thing is like pretty bad but it does get worse because even though ripley tells the three adventurers to quarantine away from the ship the science officer ash lets them on board anyway what uh, wh why what who what are you doing dude kane is wearing a, an alien on his face like it's fucking <laughs> winter fashion season in milan Wear it confidently all you want it still looks stupid not only that but they just leave the alien face sucker unconfined Bro, I know. My God. So, so they take Kane, they put him on an operating table. Mm -hmm. Captain Dallas and the science officer, Ash, discuss what they're going to do with the alien attached to his face. It's not lighted on fire? Well, we'll get to that. Now, we're assuming it's feeding him oxygen. If we remove it, it could kill him. I won't even take that chance. Let's cut it off him now. Would you cut it off him, Dave? Even if it killed Kane, would you cut off the alien? Y yes. Good. Yes. Me too. Yes. For real. Short of being a hit at Halloween parties, Kane's social life is over. You just got to cut it off. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, it's going to, nobody's going to survive this. Not physically, not socially, nope. not emotionally. Why did you let him back in the ship? So frustrating. Anyway, grab your scalpels. It's cutting time, baby. Oh. That crap can eat through the hole. After cutting into the alien, it squirts out acid blood, and it's literally eating through the floor of the ship. Right. Things are getting serious here. Uh, uh, but honestly, it could be worse, right? No. You're right. Luckily, the <laughs> acid doesn't eat its way fully through the hole, and when they check on Kane later, they discover something pretty good. Uh, is he dead? Where is it? Well, I don't know. I mean, we ought to try and find him. Yeah, let's check it. The alien is just gone from Kane's face. I guess never brushing your teeth finally paid off, but bro, this is uh, <laughs> crazy. That's exactly why you don't brush your teeth. Exactly. Um, I, I am just, <laughs> I am just too concerned with the fact that they didn't shut the fucking door when they realized the alien was gone. I know. It's like this thing, they literally, it was like attached almost surgically to his face and now it's just pff, gone. But two things do happen now. Ripley, she finds the alien that was on his face and it's dead. But miraculously, Kane himself is alive and he seems fine you know minus the psychological stuff <laughs> I, 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 I don't know I, I, I just i don't know that's suspicious what's the last thing you do remember? i remember some horrible dream about smothering it. welcome to my childhood bud uh in other good yeah, news yeah but it wasn't a dream <laughs> nice try wendy <laughs> But in other good news, remember how the ship had a rough landing on the moon? Yeah, remember, I have nightmares still. <laughs> <laughs> well, luckily, the ship is fixed now, and they're on their way back home. So instead of going into stasis right away, they all decide to stay up for one last meal together as a crew. Things are going great. Are they? <laughs> and by great, I mean a fucking alien bursts out of Kane's chest right there on the dinner table. Yeah, I had heard about this scene plenty. 
So I didn't, it didn't like shock me or anything when it happened, but yeah, it was gross. It's alarming. Like, it's still alarming. Oh, no. Touch, touch, oh. touch it. So this little blood-soaked baby alien guy growls at the crew and scurries away like a drunk guy who accidentally knocked over a vase at a party or something. He's just <laughs> gone, bro. He's a... Horrifying. It's kind of... It's it's a little funny. Like, it's a little funny looking. Everything yes. else up until this point is not funny looking. This is like the, the one kind of funny thing, I think. Yes. It's pretty goofy looking. I also have one question. Yeah. So the face sucker came from an egg that was laid. Yeah. So then the face sucker laid an egg yeah. in the human. Listen, aliens, I don't fucking know, man. <laughs> so what are the crew going to do now with Kane's body? Mm. They just unceremoniously blow his corpse out of the airlock, <laughs> and they got to find this screechy little rat alien now. The hunt is on. I did, why are you not already hunting for it? Cause you know what I mean? Like They're like, oh, no, we'll get to it. That's a good point, because you think they'd be like r like running after it or, or something, but they're like, nah. Can we watch Kane's body just tumble <laughs> off into space at fucking near light speed? Because <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's so funny when they blow it out of the airlock. Oh, God. And it starts spinning. Oh, God. It made me laugh out loud for sure. Oh, amazing. But now that they blew him out, we're, we're going to find this thing now. I promise. Mm -hmm. Two teams, Ash, Lambert, and I. Ripley, you take Parker and Brett. Now, anyone see this thing or catch it in the net that Parker is holding on his lap? Catch it, put it in the airlock. Simple enough, yeah. Catch the sure. alien in yeah. a net and then put it in the airlock. Two steps, yeah. no problem. Mm -hmm. Let's see how it goes. <laughs> Not good, it seems. No. One of the engineers, mm -hmm. Brett, played by Harry Dean Stanton, gets absolutely wrecked by an alien. And like yeah. the way it slinks down in the background made me piss my pants <laughs> full stop but here's the thing this is not the little rat alien you know we saw burst through kane's chest this mm -hmm. is a full-blown angsty teenager alien this oh my thing god is fucking huge it's like evolved like a pokemon on steroids <laughs> like it's so fucking big and scary i mean it's so big so fast how is that possible dude it's all like wet and has like a mouth inside its mouth and like a long domed head that looks like it could hold tennis balls or something i don't know but <laughs> You know what I mean? It's just fucking scary. It's a Pringle can head. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, now that we see this new alien, we, we also need a new plan. Probably. You and Ash take the main airlock. Parker Lambert, you cover up that maintenance opening, please. Basically, they think the alien is averse to heat, so they're going to try to use heat to force him through the air ducts and into the airlock so they can blow him out. And Dallas, the captain... He's going to be the bait. Oh, great. Am I, am I Claire Lambert? I want to get the hell out of here. Oh, God. It's moving right towards you. Move now. Get out of here. Well, rip to Dallas. Uh, the alien appears in the air duct he's in and reaches out for a high five when the feed goes black. <laughs> this part also kind of made me laugh because it's like, blah, <laughs> you know? <laughs> also, I love your choice of the word rip in this situation when the alien... <laughs> ripped him apart <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> he like reaches his hands out i want to pause the film with arms wide open. <laughs> <laughs> so with dallas gone ripley is in charge now and we have four people left her lambert ash and parker and just like every classic horror film we're splitting up uh yeah sure we'll move in pairs we'll go step by step and cut off every bulkhead and every vent until we have it cornered and then we'll blow it the fuck out into space so parker and lambert head out but here's the thing mm. i haven't really talked about it so much but ripley has been very wary of the science officer ash this whole time because yeah. he's been making like really like strange decisions and like uh he's been really secretive and he also mm -hmm. has like a weird shaped head. That last one might be me. <laughs> but Ripley finds out from the ship's computer that nothing is what it seems. Oh, God. <sighs> Blake, you know I don't speak computer. What just happened? Okay, here's the deal. <laughs> <laughs> the computer reads out the new mission objective. Priority one, ensure return of organism for analysis. All other considerations secondary, crew expendable. Bum, bum, bum. <gasps> that reaction is warranted, Dave, because Ripley ain't having none of this shit. She Good. confronts Ash about this new info, and he freaks out like he just joined a Pentecostal church and learned how to speak in <laughs> tongues. <laughs> Oh, God. He's freaking the fuck out. The point is, Perfect. he attacks Ripley. Oh. 
Parker and Lambert come to Ripley's rescue when Parker whacks Ash's head open with a bat. And guess what? Ash is exposed as an android that apparently runs on milk because (laughs) (laughs) white liquid just sprays from his body everywhere. Bro, Ash being a fucking robot is not a twist I was ready for. Me either. I didn't remember this at all. I was like, holy shit, this movie is nonstop. It was like, and it's gross too. Of all the gross things in this movie, this scene is fucking up there for me because like Ash's weird robot body is all sticky and it just, it feels like a Cronenberg movie. It's so gross, dude. (laughs) So essentially Ash was assigned as a robot to this mission to make sure that the alien survived. The problem now is that they need more info from Ash about how to kill the alien. So they rewire his head to ask him, which feels weird, (laughs) but here's what his stupid head has to say. Uh Uh-oh. You still don't understand what you're dealing with, do you? Perfect organism. I can't lie to you about your chances, but you have my sympathies. Well, that's bad news. Hold on. Where is the rest of the crew of this city-sized ship? Dude, I think it's only, literally only the seven members of this crew. It's such a big ship, though. You're you're concerned about things I don't give a fuck about, Dave. We're moving on. We got aliens on board. <laughs> so Ripley's plan now is for the three remaining crew members to get in a shuttle, blow this main ship up, and from the mm-hmm. shuttle, they can just kind of pray that they get picked up. They have better chances. Great. I have to point this out here, too. Okay. This is pretty progressive for a horror movie at the time. There's only three people that are still alive, two are women, and one is a black man. Oh, shit. I actually realized that the uh, that the, the token black guy lasted a lot longer in the movie than normal. Yeah. I was like, right on, man. Not <laughs> not the hero yet. It's still 1979, but, uh, yeah. you know, a good precursor. Yeah, he's not the enemy, so. You guys should watch Get Out. <laughs> <laughs> Now, Lambert and Parker go to get coolant for the shuttle so they can yes. make it last a little bit longer, and um, something happens. Oh, God. Do they drop the coolant? <laughs> <laughs> if only, buddy. <laughs> and they're dead now, so oh. so much for progress. So when Ripley finds out that Parker and Lambert are dead, she starts the self-destructo mode, like countdown, for the ship. But it's going to mm-hmm. take 10 Frickin' minutes. Why? Danger. The emergency destruct system is now activated. The ship will detonate in T minus 10 minutes. So the countdown is on, and Ripley has to evade the alien on her way to the shuttle like she's dodging her creepy ex at a frat party. <laughs> <laughs> Also, why isn't the emergency destruct button right next to the shuttle? That seems like a really bad floor plan. It's a good point, actually. It should be close, but it's like in Jurassic Park where they're like, oh, the thing's on the other side of the (laughs) island. God damn it. Why? Who did this? You now have one minute to abandon ship. The ship will automatically destruct. Ripley finally makes it safely onto the shuttle, but she only has one minute to get out of there before that ship blows up. She revs it up or whatever the fuck you do with the shuttle, and it shoots <laughs> off into space as the timer hits zero. Three, two, one. She does it. Ripley Yay! just misses the blast, and she's safe. She <sighs> takes the time to breathe, pet the cat that I haven't talked about yet, and undress <laughs> before she realizes her boyfriend hitched a ride. Oh, fuck. <laughs> The alien's in the shuttle, Dave. He's like, just listen to the mixtape I made you, baby. (laughs) (laughs) I know I killed your friends, but I'll be different this time. (laughs) Great. This is fantastic. I love how the alien is literally like, hey, where are we going? (laughs) (laughs) I thought it was actually the end. And so when he pops out, I I really wasn't expecting it. And it fucking scared me for real. (laughs) (laughs) But you know who is a quick thinker? Not the cat. Ripley. She slips on a (laughs) spacesuit. She fills the shuttle with a gas to draw the alien out and then blows it out of the airlock with the help of Captain Ahab's harpoon gun, I guess. (laughs) The alien is her Moby Dick is what I'm trying to say. Oh, okay. Great. I didn't realize Moby Dick was trying to kill everyone and then lay eggs in their stomach. Did you not even read Moby Dick? (laughs) First movies, next literature, Dave. We're going to get to it. But persistence is key, Dave. The alien gets stuck on the harpoon rope, so Ripley barbecues it with a shuttle thruster. (laughs) (laughs) Dude, I I was like, oh my god, just fucking die. I know. I was like, nothing can kill this thing. It's crazy. It's literally like hanging onto the harpoon, thinking like, oh. 
like in the vacuum of space and she's like not today bitch and <laughs> like turns on the thruster sucks it into the thr- it's great just just straight toast alien barbecue this is ripley last survivor of the nostromo signing off ripley hops into her stasis bed with the cat and off they go to dreamland and hopefully back home roll credits baby That was Alien. I fucking love this movie. Yeah, it was really intense and really good. I have one problem. Yeah. Ripley going back and finding and saving the cat feels very out of character for Ripley, who was the only person who was willing to sacrifice that person and not let them on the ship for the whole mission. I understand that, but in in my head, I kind of thought of it as a justification of her character. She cares about living things, like like her, her crew members are all dead, and this is like the one thing she can save beside herself. So that's kind of where mm. my brain went with it, but I, I understand your point. I don't think it's an unfair point. You're biased. You have a cat. I love cats. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I really did enjoy this. And, and how'd you feel about it watching it for the first time? Yeah, I liked it. I thought it was very intense. Mm-hmm. Um, the effects weren't as bad or wonky as I thought they were going to be for a movie that old. No. It definitely got me a few times. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I just think it's, uh, I thought it was a, a very good movie. It lived up to the hype for sure. I, I agree with you. I, again, I didn't remember a lot of this movie and it got me a number of times. Yeah. And I'm jaded mm-hmm. as shit. So I, <laughs> I was really surprised by that. And I was also really surprised about how freaking good it looks. The creature looks great. I don't know. I was absolutely sold by this whole thing. Yeah. I mean, honestly, the tone is great. I thought it was uh, all around a really great movie. Yeah. Agreed. The atmosphere, I think, really kept me pretty engaged. Mm-hmm. But anyway, I could yes. talk about this movie for fucking ever because I loved it. It's but true. Um, for now, let's, let's visit an equally freaking awesome movie. The sequel, Aliens. Yes, not Alien 2. Thank God. (laughs) Movie 2, Aliens, 1986. Dave, we're back. Mm -hmm. I need you to give me the synopsis for 1986's Aliens. After escaping from her worst nightmare, Ripley will willingly step right back in it because I actually don't know. (laughs) Remember when she saved herself from a giant killer alien? Well, guess what? Now there's a bunch of them and a giant queen alien who lays all the eggs. As if that wasn't bad enough, there's a kid in this one. No! (laughs) (laughs) So we open to the escape pod from the last movie, Drifting Through Space, and the inside is coated in ice. Mm. Ripley's taking a quick power nap in the crowd chamber when a robot cuts open the door of the podcycle, which seems like a bit more effort than hacking the door open, but what do I know? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> anyway, the robot finds Ripley and sends in the firefighters. Or, I don't know, they're humans in yellow suits. Bio readouts are all on the green. Looks like she's alive. Ah, oh, there goes our salvage, guys. Not sure what you mean by that guy who looks suspiciously like Joshua Jackson from the Mighty Ducks All Grown Up. <gasps> anyway, <laughs> <laughs> we cut to Ripley waking up in a medical station to a visit from Carter Burke, played by a guy who's mad about you, Paul Reiser. And oh. he tells Ripley <laughs> and he tells Ripley she was floating through space for 57 years. Bro, can you fucking imagine? No, I can't. That's <laughs> a really long nap. Yeah. I'm jealous. Turns out, the whole thing was a dream, I think. What? Was she out there for 57 years? I don't know. And it just like suddenly she's not with the guy and she's waking up from a dream. It's it's very weird. What? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, speaking of needing answers, now we're in a hearing with a bunch of politician-like dickheads yeah. grilling Ripley and basically being like, is the alien in the room with us? And Dude, uh, Ripley's not having it. This scene made me so angry because I had just watched Alien and I was like, you don't know what Ripley's been through. Okay? <laughs> I was there, man. I was there. Ripley. Van Lewin, why don't you just check out LV-426? Because I don't have to. There have been people there for over 20 years and they never complained about any hostile organism. Well, that's just swell. There's 60 or 70 families on the moon from hell and Ripley is very distraught over it, okay? But... Not for long, because Burke brings her a lieutenant to let her know that Van Leeuwen has to have his foot surgically removed from his mouth. (laughs) Ripley, we have to talk. We've lost contact with the colony on LV-426. That's right. Nobody knocked on wood, and now everything is fucked. And for some reason, they need Ripley to go back to the moon from hell to help them check on the colony? Dude. I don't know what they're doing. I I don't know. Luckily, though, Ripley has enough sense to say no to the bribes of getting her old position back. Just tell me one thing, Burke. You're going out there to destroy them, right? That's the plan. You have my word on it. All right, I'm in. Well, 
I guess her sense of self-preservation got sucked out into the airlock with the alien in the last movie because Ripley decides to go back to the moon from hell because obviously the space marines need help from a very much not marine to... I don't know what the plan is here. For me, I keep getting caught up on the fact that, like, she, as far as she knows, five minutes ago was just defeating an alien, went to icy sleep for 57 years, <laughs> wakes up. It, it, it could have been, it felt like five minutes for her. And now she's like, fuck, bro, I'm right back in it. And now I'm mm -hmm. 130 years old. <laughs> Or something. That's gross. All right, listen up. Is this going to be a stand-up fight, sir, or another bug hunt? Well, now we get to meet the extremely stereotypically problematic crayon eaters. Sorry, space crayon eaters, or <laughs> marines for the layman, <laughs> including Hudson, played by your favorite real Bill Paxton. Bill the boy. Hicks. An android named Bishop who Ripley hates because she's an iPhone user. And then Ripley briefs them on just how scary these xenomorph aliens are. She tells them that just one of them turned her entire crew into human confetti in less than 24 hours. That's expressive, but also fun sounding. Sure. Also very wet. I feel like kind of a fifth wheel around here. Is there anything I can do? I don't know. Is there anything you can do? Well, I can drive that loader. Where you want it? So while the crew is getting ready to do something. Ripley dons a Wish.com Iron Man suit to show that she can carry some weight around here. She might need a suit to do it, but still. But you know what? Enough talking and more doing. Let's get to some action. Yes. Second squad, move up. Flanking positions. So now that the crew is on the moon from hell, they start searching for a xenomorph to kill. Yeah. But they're not having any luck. I'm no. not sure exactly how not finding killer aliens is luck, but whatever. <laughs> they're out for blood. These guys are like a ragtag crew. Of just They just want to like beat somebody up. <laughs> like They have so yeah. much pent-up energy. They don't care what it is. They just want violence. It's true. They do. Nothing. Not a goddamn thing. That's right, Blake. It's a ghost town. Or er, ghost colony. No people, no xenomorphs, just destruction. Yeah. Though, after some more searching, they do find something that seems perfectly normal. What? Are those the same ones? Careful, Burke. <laughs> they find a bunch of those face suckers in glass tubes in the lab because humans are stupid, uh, and a couple of them are still alive. People make pets out of anything. I'm telling you. But then they find something even scarier than they could have ever imagined. What? <laughs> I got her. Ow! It's okay. Ah! Ah! You're gonna be all right now. It's a kid. Damn it. Absolutely terrifying. Oh, God. Just when I thought the scares would stop. Never. Anyway, this kid is by herself, and she's been living in some weird Star Wars trash compactor looking area for however long it took the crew to get there, which is totally plausible. Stop asking me questions. <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. Literally, my brain went immediately to Star Wars. My name's Newt. Nobody calls me Rebecca except my brother. So while Ripley is getting to know Trash Shoot Girl and Bishop the Android is dissecting a face sucker, Hudson is looking for colonists via the trackers that are implanted in everyone because reasons. Uh, you got to keep track of your, your laborers, I guess. Yo! Stop your grinning and drop your linen. Found them. They're alive? Unknown. It looks like all of them. Wait, so the trackers don't have some kind of bio information? What good are they then? Dude, that's a fucking great point. You'd think it like gives at least a, a pulse or something. Nope. Like a, an on and off switch for like dead or alive. <laughs> like just give me something. <laughs> So the crew makes their way to the main building with Ripley and Newt for some dumbass reason <laughs> to go save all those people and have nothing go wrong whatsoever. Not one thing. We can't have any firing in there. I want you to collect magazines from everybody. Okay, so basically the crew is going headfirst into a fusion reactor and if they start shooting, it's gonna blow everything and everyone to smithereens, which is not such a bad plan if you think about it. I mean, I, yeah, I, I agree with that plan. So it's just gonna be smooth sailing from here. <laughs> Jesus, okay. God. So they find this whole dangerous place that they're in is covered in human honeycomb, and they witness a baby xenomorph bursting from a still-alive human. This is so gross. <laughs> oh, God. This was traumatic all over again. Yes, it's really bad. But this means the game plan now is to get the fuck out of here before anything else goes... <laughs> Coming out of the goddamn wall, the fuck? Well, 
the xenomorphs are pretty pissed about their little baby and they start killing everyone and ripley <sighs> can't stand by and let the lieutenant just freeze like a congressman in a live interview so she takes control <laughs> each shipment from connell <laughs> <laughs> So Ripley drives their armored vehicle that looks like a Hot Wheels car I had as a kid <laughs> through a wall and saves everyone who is left. Ripley's a fucking G, dude. Yes. So here's who we have left, right? We got Hicks, yeah. Hudson, and the stereotypical tough Marine chick, Vasquez. Yeah. Once Ripley destruction derbies their way out of there, she has to give <laughs> Hudson the worst news about his comrades. Uh, what? Hey, look. The Sarge and Dietrich aren't dead, man. You, you can't dead, help lady. them. Right now they're being cocooned just like the others. No, and I can't express this enough. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. I, uh, <laughs> this, oh, God. Like, sorry, your friends are dead. You're, they are actually dead. They're essentially yes. dead. They, it's a laggy death, but it's a death nonetheless. <laughs> it's true. So Ripley comes up with the only logical plan at this point. Nuke the site from space. And Burke, who must have been really hurt in his rom-com days, is like, no, we can totally make money from this. Luckily, though, he's overruled, and they call for an evac to the ship in space. I didn't say they got their evac, now, did I? Dude. That's it, man. Game over, man. It's game over. So their pilot is ripped to shreds midair by the alien version of a bee getting into your car and stinging you, making you crash. <laughs> <laughs> and now they're forced to come up with another way to not die until the rescue comes in 17 days. Oh, God. That poor pilot, too. It's like her airbag was just an alien. <laughs> just like, <"Wah." laughs> We repair the barricades at these two intersections and weld plate steel over these ducks here. I'm not sure I love this plan of welding themselves into part of the colony, but at no. least we have some time for a cute moment where Hicks gives Ripley a stalker, sorry, a tracking watch. <laughs> Aww. It's like, hey, will you go steady with me? I'm always watching you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Ripley immediately re-gifts the stalker watch to Newt. Ooh. How rude. Spicy. I guess cute woman over. <laughs> Crossing Hicks and Ripley off on my bracket. Jesus. <laughs> now, if you're smart, we can both come out of this heroes, and we will be set up for life. Do you really think you can get a dangerous organism like that past ICC quarantine? How can they impound it if they don't know about it? What are you, what are you gonna do, Burke? Smuggle an alien that can't stop turning humans into cocoons? Yeah, so, so to be clear, they're trying to kill these aliens, and Burke is like, no, there's lots of money to be made. We're still gonna take some back, though. Yeah. And everyone's like, no, fuck you. And he's like, mm, yeah, well, we're gonna do it anyway. Right, and I'm glad the crew doesn't have time to deal with Burke's capitalism boner, because the fusion <laughs> reactor part of the colony is gonna blow in a few hours, because scary, unbeatable aliens aren't enough drama. I already have high blood pressure. Just give me a fucking break. Right? Well, somebody's going to have to go out there. Take a portable terminal, go out there and patch in manual. Oh, yeah, sure. I'll go. I mean, I'm the only one qualified to remote pilot the ship anyway. So Android Bishop, which is a way cooler name than Alexa, volunteers <laughs> to go out and remote pilot an escape ship to get everyone out before the whole complex becomes Oppenheimer's wet dream. Ew. But now it's time for another quick, cute moment. Okay, Ripley cuddles up with Newt mm -hmm. on the floor for a quick power nap. This is really adorable. <laughs> Well, I think you jinxed it, but, uh... Yeah, shit. Anyway. I have a tendency to do that. <laughs> yeah. The things I love turn into murder <laughs> very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> so, basically, Ripley and Newt are now trapped in the nap room with a couple of face suckers. And Burke's evil ass turns off the security monitor so that nobody can see that Ripley's in trouble. But you can't kill her that easily because she sets off the fire alarm, causing what's left of the team to come and save her and Newt. Yeah. That's it! Clear. <coughs> it was Burke. He figured that he could get an alien back to quarantine if one of us was impregnated. Oh, that's how he plans on smuggling aliens back oh, to wow. wherever the fuck they're going. This is sinister, man. This uh, me. whole scene where they're tr you know they're trapped in the the nap room or whatever. It's just oh, it's so tense. I love that scene so much. It had me on the edge of my yes. seat. Yes. And after they accuse Burke of this insane plan, the power goes out and now they're in danger again. I think the aliens are in cahoots with Burke. I think so. Yeah, they're definitely planning together. But somehow the aliens have made their way into the welded off part of the colony. So since welding themselves into a part of the colony didn't work, 
they decide to weld themselves into another part of the colony. Just keep on welding. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the aliens are still coming. And uh, how the hell is this happening? Six. Can't be. That's inside the room. <laughs> Basically, the aliens are crawling through the drop ceiling because apparently no one at any point looked up. Bro, what in the 80s shitty home decor is going on here? <laughs> God damn it. So Hicks pokes his head up into the ceiling to see dozens of them crawling towards them. And now it's fucking mayhem. Oh, yeah. Everyone is firing in all directions. Burke locks them in with the xenomorphs. Hudson gets pulled into the floor, which is apparently a reverse drop ceiling. <laughs> Burke finally gets shredded, and everyone starts going through air ducts, where Vasquez and Lieutenant Freeze sacrifice themselves to buy everyone more time. Dude, this is like uh, the genesis of Among Us, you know, the game? Yeah. Straight up. Everybody's venting everywhere. <laughs> gotcha. With this. Well, we lost Newt, uh, but not really because thanks to Ripley being rude and regifting her stalker watch, mm -hmm. we're gonna go get her because no child left behind or something. Do we have to? <laughs> I would like not to, but uh, I'm not running this ship anyway. <laughs> right as they're about to get her from the weird sewer that's only separated by metal grates, no! Newt gets taken to be a mini cocoon, but. That doesn't stop Ripley because kids are the future or something. I don't know. <laughs> we are the world. <laughs> Regardless, Ripley gets Hicks to the ship and then has Bishop fly her back to go save Newt. You now have 15 minutes to reach minimum safe distance. Thanks, Exposition Intercom. Now, Ripley, who is flush with weapons, makes her way into the literal alien egg nest to save Newt. Ugh. After she does, though, they meet the queen xenomorph, the... Queenomorph, if you will. <laughs> and she's laid like a bajillion demon eggs. And she's got a ton more in the chamber. <laughs> oh my gosh. I don't even it's necessarily true. think this is scary. It's just gross looking. Yeah, a little bit. Holy shit. Ripley shows the queen that, hey, bitch, we got fire, and the queen lets her go. This is brilliant because the whole place is about to go up in a blaze of glory, so you can just get the fuck out. It just go. Or you can light everything on fire and piss off the queen, ensuring your escape is as difficult as possible. Uh, <laughs> what was I thinking? Bro, every decision's the wrong one. <laughs> So Ripley carries Newt up and away from the pissed off queen amorph into an elevator. And as soon as Ripley and Newt are up, up and away, the other elevator shows up and the queen amorph is like, why, oh, thank you. I think I will. How modern of me. Close your eyes, baby. Ripley and Newt watch as the elevator doors open and the queen amorph is like, it's Britney, bitch. But then <laughs> Bishop to the rescue. <laughs> I'm not really sure why he wasn't waiting there to begin with, but let's not dwell on it. He explains this later. He explains because he's like, the platform was unstable, and so I had to take a lap. Hopefully it didn't scare you. I was like, scare her? I pissed all over again. <laughs> I've gone through so much fucking underwear. Yeah, it's true. I really need to buy stock in Hanes. Yeah, I need to talk to our producers, you, about my underwear budget for this season. Buy burlap in the meantime. Punch it, Bishop! Punch it, bitch. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> So they get away with literally no time to spare before the whole colony pops like a nuclear balloon <laughs> yeah. and they fly up to the ship in orbit. And now it's time to get the hell out of here. Finally. Hicks is all bandaged up from the acid blood that was spilled and Bishop is trying to explain his way out of trouble for being a bad robot. Uh, so before we can leave, we realize that the Queenomorph has somehow managed to sneak onto the ship? Dude. Like, no one noticed the 10-foot pissed-off alien hiding in the corner? She's fucking huge! I'm sorry, I'm not trying to be, like, you know, body-shaming anybody here, but <laughs> this bitch is huge! It's like, how was the ship, like, weight differential not, like, uh, very apparent? I don't know, but whatever. It's too pissed off for us to even think about it because it rips Bishop in half, <laughs> and now Ripley is distracting it from attacking Newt. Or, no. She runs and hides in a room with a thick door while the Queen of Morph tries to snatch Newt from in the floor. God damn it. Also, Bishop is a synthetic human, right? He's an android. And so when he's mm -hmm. ripped in half, he also has milk blood. But um, he, he can still function, technically. Sort of, yeah. Get away from her, you bitch! Oh, oh shit! 
<laughs> Ripley has on the Wish.com Iron Man suit, and now it's boss fight time. This is going to be epic. <laughs> it's like Ripley in a mech suit, just yeah. fucking punching <laughs> aliens. It's great. I love this scene. Okay, so... <laughs> Well, but I guess epic means they're just going to dance their way into an airlock that's in the floor. I'm not going to lie to you. The, the fight is fun, but the sound effects for like the loader suit is like... Pff, huh. tss, pff. So it doesn't like seem very... Anyway, the industrial loading Iron Man suit lands on top of the Queen Amorph in the airlock. Yeah. So Ripley starts climbing out so she can open the airlock when it grabs her foot. Oh. <laughs> Okay, so she's somehow able to withstand the vacuum of space and the probably thousand pound alien before kicking it off and launching it into space, which is how the last one ended, but whatever. This is the exact ending. This is the same ending. Yeah. It just yeah. with a, a mech suit and a bigger ship and a bigger alien. It's the same movie, just bigger. So Ripley saves the day. Bishop, who, like you said, was still able to function, saves Newt from being sucked out into space. Mm -hmm. Newt calls Ripley mommy for some weird-ass reason. And now Ripley and Newt lay down for the cryonet back to Earth? Do they ever say where they're going? I think it is supposed to be Earth. They might have said it. I don't recall. I was, okay. like, sweating a lot. <laughs> Anyway, we roll credits, Ooh. and I can't help but need to talk about the fact that Newt calls Ripley mommy. Yeah, so Newt is kind of like replacing her dead parents with Ripley, <laughs> and Ripley is replacing her old dead daughter with Newt, who was the same age as Newt, essentially. This is some very face-off energy. It fucking is, actually. <laughs> it really is. What is up with us uh, like watching movies that, like, People replace their dead children. I don't know, and it really bothers me. Me too. Stop replacing your dead children. I understand go. finding kinship or whatever, but like this is full blown replacement. She calls her mommy. That's weird. And Ripley doesn't even say, "Hey, honey, that's weird." <laughs> like, <laughs> She's like, "Yes, you're my daughter. <laughs> I own you." I also think it's interesting because this looks like a mainstream action movie from the '80s. You know, like just the look of it. it. Does yeah. Whereas Alien is a mm -hmm. bit darker. Aliens has that kind of big pop cinema kind of feel to it i think we'll get into that in the thunderdome but i i don't know which one i'm gonna pick honestly so i kind of want to get to the thunderdome what's holding this back dave aliens looking for mommy issues this time this, this time is mommy <laughs> issues fuck i never get these right movie versus movie welcome to the thunderdome the thunderdome <laughs> All right, Dave, we're back in the Thunderdome, you bitch, and I'm in need of an afternoon coma. Hang on. But before we watch these movies, Dave, you and I decide on five things that we both agree make a good alien movie, so let's go through them. Uh, if we have to. Number one, we need a terrifying alien presentation. No, 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 you gotta show me why they're terrifying. Number two, we need badass Ripley-ness. Which Ripley will out Ripley the other? Number three, we need an endearing crew. Oh, I like these people. Number four, we need rising tension. Oh, is it getting hot in here? And number five, we need a satisfying alien defeat. Which Ripley blew the alien out of an airlock better? <laughs> <laughs> So we're starting with terrifying alien presentation. So the aliens and aliens are shown to be very terrifying aliens. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's all you need. We get it. <laughs> Done. But here's why they're actually shown to be terrifying. They multiply yeah. faster than rabbits. They have their two mouths with razor sharp teeth and a lust for blood or no, a lust for human nests for their eggs. Uh, sorry. A human nest for their babies that hatched from eggs is eggs. Anyway, <laughs> there's like a million of these things coming for the entire crew. And there's a gigantic queen, the queen amorph. And she is not only ruthless, she's actually smart too. She is. And I think with a terrifying alien presentation, you know, these are this, this is the same creature in both mm -hmm. films. Yes. Right. So I think each film does differentiate the alien in different ways, mm -hmm. you know? And I think the way the alien is presented in the original film is near perfect because it's a slow burn and we see lots of like 
gross, juicy close-ups of its face before like the bigger reveal at the end, but it's mainly kept in shadow, which works to its benefit, I think, and it helps sell this whole thing even yeah. all these years later. Mm -hmm. I mean, even the reveals are terrifying. You know, one launches out and clamps on Kane's face, then a baby bursts through Kane's <laughs> chest, and then in its formative years, we see it slink down from various parts of the ship, and it like blends in perfectly. It's just so good and so fucking scary. Yeah, it's not only scary, but it's also kind of cool too it is cool and and i think we can move on to our next point which is badass ripley-ness <laughs> so what i love about alien is that it really starts as an ensemble piece you know mm -hmm. but slowly a heroic voice rings out from the pack and it's fucking ripley yes. you know she she didn't ask to be the hero but she rises to the occasion and learns so much as things get worse and worse making her an undeniable badass to be mm -hmm. clear so by the final act she's learned enough to manipulate the alien blow it out of the airlock and then deep fry it for good measure like she's yeah incredible in this film and uh, i think really shines yeah i can't disagree with you ripley is very badass in the original alien but ripley's badassery in aliens the sequel <laughs> has far surpassed her badassery in Alien. She now knows yeah. what she's up against, and she is not about to underestimate these things. On top of having to fight off the xenomorphs, she has to protect a child who randomly decides she's adopted now, and she learns <laughs> how to use a low-rent Iron Man suit. It, she's way more badass this time. Uh, I, I, I mean, I do have to agree with you. It's a, Like I said, it's a bigger film, and Ripley is fresh off of her learning experience with the first set of, of aliens, or first alien, rather, in yeah. the film. And now she's dealing with a bunch of them, so now she's, like, fully embraced her badass era, and she's just mowing these fuckers down. But my thing, too, is how much I think she really stands out from the crew, but the crew really does support her in both films. Yes, it's true. They really do. And I think this can get us into our next point, endearing crew. So most of the crew in Aliens is kind of douchey at first, but eventually yeah. they all become endearing in their own ways. You know, until they all die. Hudson yeah. is all of us trying to just quit and go home. Vasquez <laughs> is who we all wish we could be with how fearless she is. Oh, yeah. Hicks is the most centered and rational one. For sure. And then you got the guy who was mad about you, but then just was mad. <laughs> Not to mention Ripley and Newt. Nearly everyone you end up liking a lot in this movie. I, I mean, I don't know, man. I kind of disagree. I think they're kind of more caricatures than anything. <sighs> I, whatever i think it's appropriate i think for the film mm -hmm. but like hudson annoyed the shit out of me yeah. i just wanted to slap the fuck out of him uh says blake who's super violent right. and very <laughs> tough but uh i think i really like the crew from the original alien film we have such a mix of characters i'd say the most relatable are brett and parker like the engineers who have to fix everything and don't get paid the same yes i fucking hear you guys loud and clear mm -hmm. uh but they are kind of funny and nonchalant but dallas is a great captain lambert uh gives kind of a funny kind of whiny personality to start and ash straight up freaks me out <laughs> but that's being said i think it's a really great mix that feels real and relatable and you may not like or agree with everyone but i think that makes all the other personalities stronger and more distinct in their kind of realness and the way they fit into this film uh, i can kind of see why you'd say why everyone in aliens is a character but i also like i didn't really love anybody in the original outside of ripley because everyone's kind of causing tension in their own ways you know no, I, I feel you, and I get it. Uh, I think that gets us to our next point pretty nicely. Number four, rising tension. Ooh. I think what makes Alien, the original film, a masterpiece is is that rising tension throughout. As this story progresses, it just gets worse and worse and worse. And just when you think we're over that hump, boom, there's an alien. I mean, <laughs> we have, like, the face hugging, the acid blood, the chest bursting, the alien rapidly growing mm -hmm. and hunting and hiding, and it's just like, fuck, everything sucks. And I was just, ugh absolutely on the edge of my seat the entire time you don't know what way it's gonna go and and also the reveal of uh freaking ash being an, an android yes what the fuck took me out of my fucking pants right there it was crazy <laughs> i was just left wondering what the hell is gonna happen next and i uh, that that tension really really drove it home for me yeah i think i have to agree with you the tension in alien the original is very 
you know, nicely risen throughout the movie. Um, but in the beginning of Aliens, the tension is low because the crew isn't taking any of this seriously. But right. as they realize that everyone is gone, things start to ramp up. Not to mention when they start to encounter the xenomorphs and yeah. see up close how fucked they really are. Yeah. After that, you have a child getting in the way, and that's icing on the cake of the tension of this movie. But when you see the queen morph, the tension could crush a tin can. I agree with you. I think the interesting point about aliens versus alien is that um, we already have so much stuff established mm-hmm. in aliens mm-hmm. that it's it's kind of hard to keep that tension. We're learning new stuff, but it's not as alarming. The pacing is a little bit wonky for me compared to the original. But I do think both of them really nailed their climaxes at the end. Yeah, which, you know, we can get into the final point, satisfying alien defeat. Listen, Ripley clearly has a fetish for airlocks. I'll tell you that much. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Not only did she shoot the first xenomorph in Alien out of the airlock, she did it again in this one. But this time, she used the Wish.com Iron Man suit to pin the queen amorph against the walls of the airlock before she is able to somehow hold herself and the queen amorph up (laughs) as the vacuum of space is ripping everything out of the ship and then she just fucking kicks the queen amorph out of the airlock and it's so satisfying it it is very satisfying it is as little as it actually makes sense but uh it's fine because it's a fun action movie and that's fine but like i mentioned earlier i love how the alien is defeated in the original film Mm -hmm. this dude is out for blood and when he shows up in the shuttle I was dying. <laughs> like, yeah. I was dying. By this point, Ripley is like, nah, I ain't going out this way. And she immediately has a plan. Like, she gasses the alien, harpoons it out the airlock. And when she sees that little alien skitching on the shuttle back there, <laughs> she just fucking lights him up with a thruster. Bro. It's so satisfying. And I just, I loved every second of it. It was joyous. Yeah, I, I have to agree with you. It was pretty joyous. And, uh, you know, that brings us to the end of our Thunderdome points here. And, and I, I don't know if I've actually been swayed enough one way or the other. So, oh, boy. I think we have to get into the, the finish line and, and just pick one, you know? It might be a photo finish. <laughs> or we might have to call my mom. Uh, <laughs> we're not sure yet. Yeah. <laughs> hey, look. We did it. It's the finish line. We're at the finish line. Can I go home yet? Uh, alright. Okay, Dave. Here we are. It's the finish line. This is where uh, we, we, we figure out who brings home the prize. The first prize film trof- yeah. trophy Metal badge uh, thing. Sticker. I don't know. I've been eating glue sticks all afternoon, and we just got to fucking get to this, man. Oh, let's do it. I'm going to go first, because I, I feel very decisive on my my thoughts and feelings about these films. I love these movies. Mm-hmm. I really have a newfound appreciation for them. I get why people love them. I get why people think the first one is a masterpiece, and I get why people think Aliens is one of the best sequels of all time. Yeah. But for me, Alien is the winner. I, I think it's a masterpiece, and I'm so glad we watched it. It's, it's literally now one of my favorite films i loved it that much wow i loved this movie it it absolutely blew me away and it hits all those points for me so perfectly and above all else was captivating and atmospheric and those are two things that are are really big for me in film it's true i want to be left thinking about it i want to feel this movie and i think it really puts you there for me my choice for first price film is is alien wow i'm not surprised i don't know why Mm -hmm. i said wow um (laughs) wow i'm literally not even fucking surprised at all (laughs) wasn't even a sarcastic wow. It was just like, it just <laughs> came out. <laughs> Here's what I'll say. While Alien is a very good, tense, scary, awesome movie, mm. Aliens is bigger, it's badder, it's scarier, there's uh, more of the aliens, mm. there's more brutal deaths, there's yeah. m- way more eggs and fucking <laughs> face suckers and... Uh, there's even a kid in this one, okay? This is all of those things. But did you notice I didn't say better? Oh, oh, it's a twist! It's a <laughs> twist! <laughs> because while it is all of those things, it's just not better. It's the exact same story mm-hmm. from like the middle of the second half on yeah. as the first one. I was for real just sweating for just a second there. I was like, oh boy, oh boy, oh shit. I knew you were going to fucking pick this week. Go on, sorry. Always love to surprise you, Blake. Anyway, (laughs) (laughs) it's Ripley 
trying to get away from the big bad alien while also trying to avoid getting blown to smithereens by the thing that she's in. Okay. And, and now the cat's a kid. Right. She has another thing that she's trying to save along with her. It's the same fucking ending. It's literally like James Cameron's like, I don't know, just copy them. It's like the original film was like in regular text and the sequel is just the same text, but in bold. Yeah. <laughs> but what italics, that's exactly what it is. I don't know. It's, it's good. Mm-hmm. Don't get me wrong. It's just the same movie. And it's not a standalone movie, which to me is not a mark of a good sequel. That, you know, because if you just watched Aliens 2 without watching Aliens, you'd be very confused. Yeah, I I fully agree. It's kind of like we talked about this with Terminator. I think you can watch Terminator 2 on its own and you you get it. Mm -hmm. Uh, But this, I don't think, holds up in the same way. I feel like people are going to be mad at us for this because I don't want to come off like I'm dog and aliens because it's it's really fun and it's a really great film and it's absolutely worth watching. I think it's an incredible sequel the way to do a sequel to alien is the bigger action way Mm -hmm. i do have issues with the same fucking ending happening i i do like the film i do like the film a lot but watching them back to back i was just so captivated by the original film that um i wanted to like aliens more than i did Mm -hmm. but i just uh didn't it's fine it's a good movie it's not as good as alien look at us look how far we've come (sighs) yes mainly me because you haven't changed i'm a fucking rock over two millennia a little worn a little rounder but uh pretty much the fucking same (laughs) basically and i'm a whole different movie person so What an episode, man. These yeah, are man, God this is damn fun. it. I love these these movies, so I'm glad we did this. Uh, and I'm looking forward to to more stuff. We gotta watch Alien 3, man. David Fincher oh, directed that. I don't wanna do that. I've never seen it. I heard okay, it's bad. Fine, we'll do it. Let's watch it. <laughs> <laughs> well, this has been a fun episode. Uh, I'm sweaty. Mm-hmm. Yep. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go and and uh Stay out of space for now. Yeah, I got a pregnancy test to check up on. I'll see you guys in a couple weeks. Hmm? I'm pregnant. (laughs) Hey, First Prize listeners. Thanks for tuning in this week. Thanks for being thankful we haven't perfected space travel with us. If you enjoyed this episode, if you enjoyed hearing us explode from the inside, consider subscribing to our socials. It's at First Prize Pod on all platforms, and that includes Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. We're on TikTok and YouTube as well. Also, don't forget to check out our website. It's firstprizefilms.com. Yep, we do this for free because we're pregnant with space coupons, but if you still <laughs> like to support us, consider rating and reviewing us on Apple Podcasts. Absolutely. Anything helps. Join us next week as we get back to the horror basics with these og slasher films oh yeah we're talking about a nightmare on elm street from 1984 versus friday the 13th from 1980 yeah it's gonna be real stabby i think bring your mullets or jean shorts what happened in the 80s (laughs) all sorts of wonderful things i don't want to know about it okay see ya bye ya But I, I kind of relate to the realness of the original crew a little bit more, I think. Yeah. I see what you did there. You tried yeah. to give me a transition. I just mm-hmm. kept fucking talking. <laughs>